Hello and welcome. I'm Mike Davis. Thanks for joining us here on Sound of Sports. Big show for you today. We're going to be talking to us. Should he retire? What's going on with the Dolphins and that bleak, bleak offense? Plus, Nick Sirianni, should he be fired? A lot to discuss today on SOS. Don't go anywhere. SOS starts right now. Make some noise. This is Sound Off Sports, sponsored by Sam and Ash. Well, hello and welcome inside the den here at Fox 5 Studios for Sound Off Sports. I'm Mike Davis, joined by my main man, my producer, James Edward Berkman, the fourth. James, uh, as a fantasy football owner with a lot of stock, a lot of teams with Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddell, Oof. Devon Achan, I mean... It's a dire situation for That's these tough. Dolphins. I feel bad for Mike McDaniel. Uh, McDaniel's, uh, you know, just a, a great coach, a guy who knows how the scheme and really great offensive mind. He doesn't really have a quarterback to get the ball to these playmakers. It's fascinating because you think, you know, everybody rails on Tua last year. You're the guy who's like he can't play, and you know, That's below because 50. he can't. Well, but I'm not. But here's what I'm saying. What are you saying? I'm saying look how good he is compared to the regular quarterback that actually has a role in today's NFL. That's what's so fascinating about this job, particularly this specific position, is that Tua, who makes big bucks, is not seen as the guy who can really take you over the hump and win you a Super Bowl. But look how capable he is, how much more capable he is than the standard NFL quarterback. Skylar Thompson, he's getting paid and making a living in the NFL, cannot make it work. You know, it, it, now you get another guy, Tyler Huntley. You throw him in the mix. He can't make it work. So it's fascinating that Tua gets railed on so much. Meanwhile, that offense is moving and functioning with a guy. like some, So I'm not saying he's Patrick Mahomes, but he's not too bad. No, um, that offense looks uh, like it does. Let me put it this way. That Miami offense that we watched on Monday night against the Titans, that looks like what a Tua-led offense looks like when it gets below 70 degrees. <laughs> or when you're playing on the road in Buffalo or Kansas City in the playoffs. You love this. That's, that's what I'm, – I'm not kidding because it's true. Is record below 50 degrees again? It's horrible. When, when the weather gets below 70, below 70, Tua can't win. It's, it's unbelievable. And, I'm, and it gets worse after the weather drops below 50. It, it's like nothing I've ever seen before. So, okay, so we know. But, but the thing is, unfortunately for Tua – you know, we don't know what the outlook is on his return this season. We don't know what the outlook right. looks like for his return yeah. indefinitely and that's a much more, as an NFL yeah. player. And that's what we really want to talk about in this segment because, you know, should Tua retire? Should he come back? You know, we all know the history of his concussions and, you know, how continuous that is uh, as a debilitating, you know, uh, thing for him as an athlete. Um what do you think, James? Do you think, I mean, clearly this is, you know, a decision that we're not really justified in really talking right. about yeah. or we, making. We're not as, doctors. We're not physicians. No. We're not Tua. We're not a member of his family. It really comes down to him and what yeah. he wants to do and the doctors that are with him, you know, in making this decision. What do you think, though, ultimately is going to happen? And what do you think he should do? If it were... I'm trying to think of Tua as if he were a family member, right? Um, I think Tua, and and I don't know, again, the risks long-term that would come with a, another potential concussion if he were right. to return. But if I were a family member or a friend of Tua's, I would probably be pushing him to retire. Hang it up, brother. It's not worth risking your long-term late health later in your life yeah you know what do you want to be doing when you're 70 years old you know do you want to be playing in the yard with your grandkids or you know do you want to risk not knowing who your grandkids are All right, welcome back to Sound Off Sports. I am joined right now by somebody who's a fixture in the Las Vegas 
community. She's the face of fantasy. And we're not just talking fantasy football because she is in a lot of <laughs> fantasy football leagues. We're talking about this show at the Luxor. It's Mariah Nislanic. Is that, am I saying, am I saying yeah. it right? Yes. Nis Polish, Nislanic, yes. Okay, I got a little Polish in me too. <laughs> but everybody just knows her as Mariah from fantasy. Mariah, how, I mean, you guys are celebrating 25 years, but how many years have you been a part of this show. Well, I like to say 10 plus, but I'm actually going on 16 years, which don't don't do, <laughs> don't do the math on that. But uh, yeah, I'm really, really blessed and honored to have been with the show for uh, so many different versions, different singers, all the different ups and downs of Las Vegas. And yeah, Fantasy's celebrating 25 years. She's on the magazine cover. She's all over. Whenever it's something fantasy, it's like, okay, Mariah is going to be there. You really are the superstar of that show. So let's talk about you, though, a little bit beyond just because you guys are celebrating 25 years. But the reason why I really wanted to have you here is because you are a sports person. You're in fantasy football drafts with me with Jason Feinberg. You were a stud on the basketball court. I mean, like, no joke stud. Let's talk about that. Grand Junction, Colorado. That's where you grew up. Yep. When did you start balling out? I, uh, my dad played basketball growing up. He was my coach. So I've literally been playing basketball since I was like four years old. I danced I, to make both my mom and my dad happy. I, I danced during uh, the day and then I'd come, go home and play uh, basketball with my dad and um, started really around fourth grade, um, started competing in uh, AAU and then, yeah, played all through high school, had a bunch of scholarships. I was all state my junior and senior year in high school point guard. Um, yeah, I was going to go play in college and... My life went a different way. Obviously, now I'm a Las Vegas showgirl, so. <laughs> well, yeah. okay, we can't just, you're skimming over Sorry. a lot there. We got to dive into this. So what where were you, like a one-two guard, a point guard, shooting guard? Yeah, my junior year, I was a point guard, and then uh, my senior year, uh, really focused on shooting guard. Um, that's what I was and, no. and you have recruited all, to play basketball. And you're oh. getting all these offers, D1, you're like a stud, and then you had a, a knee injury, right? I Ankle. I broke, ankle. I broke my ankle. Um kind of right on the cusp of, you know, recruiting time um, back in the day. So I was kind of bummed about that, trying to decide what I wanted to do, if I wanted to try to walk on um, to go play in college. I was also valedictorian, so I had a bunch of scholarships really? to play uh, and or to go to college anywhere I wanted. So I really had my uh, choice of it. And, yeah, I was – all about all about basketball back in the day. That was Wait, my hold on. life and my life and goal. I didn't know this about you because I know a lot about you. You were valedictorian of your high school as well. Yep. Pretty smart. <laughs> oh my god! So you really yeah. had a lot going for you. And then what brings you to Vegas? I kind of kind of got depressed after I broke my ankle. Didn't know what I wanted to do. So the scene the. Um, the summer after my senior year, my mom was like, go out to Las Vegas. You know, you were such a great dancer when you were little. Go audition for shows and see what happens. If you don't end up booking anything, just come back. We'll get you in school. You can try to walk on to any any college that you want playing basketball. And I was like, okay, you know, just let's just try something different. You know, I yeah. graduated high school. Um, and luckily, I came out and was uh, lucky enough. I booked something. I think I went to five or six auditions before I booked uh, Show in the Sky at the Rio. So I was like, I guess this is what I'm going to do now. And Got enrolled in UNLV and have been professionally dancing ever since. Oh my God. And the parallels you see as an athlete to being on stage every night, performing in fantasy, it's like being a, a basketball athlete. It's, the, it's kind of similar. What are the parallels that you have seen just from your life, from high school being a, a, a baller on the court to now being a dancer? Well, in, on in the high stage? school, I played basketball, um, volleyball, ran track, I went to state and track, and I was also a state champion bodybuilder. So I was kind of had my hand in everything, oh my but God. Um, I like when I came out to audition, they'd you know be like Here, you know do a grand battement, do a you know all the all the you know ballet terms. I was like, oh, it'd been so many years since I'd taken ballet. I was like, can you just show me? Literally, if if I can uh, see it, I can mimic it. But I didn't, you know, go, going from. Straight, so you're one of those people too. who can like a lot of people are like that with music. They can hear something and then they can replicate it immediately. And they're you know, but you. As long as somebody demonstrates to you, okay, this is what I want you to do, you can replicate it on the first try, pretty much. Pretty much, yep. Yeah. That was, yeah, one of my strengths back back when I was auditioning for things because you had to be so quick. And now um, I've been at Fantasy for 16 years, and we bring new choreographers in. Um, 
so I'm not as as fresh as as quick as I <laughs> as my whippersnapper days were, but I can probably still. I'm I mean, if you show me just show me a move, and I'm sure I could. Uh, hey, listen, you don't want to see a move from me, but that's <laughs> so you really are like the LeBron James of fantasy oh. because oh. because here's the thing. I mean, you're also a parent. You just became a mom. You're and you're still at the high level of your game and the face of the program. Meanwhile, you've been there for a long time. So it, it's interesting. How have you even just in, you know, yourself kind of interacted with the show over the years and how, what keeps it fresh and new for you after 16 years? Well, I, I started just as a swing dancer, which means whenever one of the full-time girls needs off, you fill in for them, kind of uh, climb the ladder to be, um, well, just a you know, full-time dancer. And then I had an opportunity, our dance captain um, was ready to retire. So I kind of jumped into the dance captain position and then Moved to company manager, associate producer, <laughs> and now I am co-producer of the show. So I, I literally have my hand in absolutely everything fantasy. Yeah. I also run their social media. So it, for me, it's never boring. And our show runs seven days a week, and we have you know, different girls. I do scheduling, filling them in, making sure there's always eight dancers, our singer on stage, and an aerialist. <laughs> All right, guys, to listen to this full conversation, make sure you check us out at fox5vegas.com and on our YouTube page. We'll be right back after a short break. All right, welcome back to SOS. As much as it pains me to say this, uh, James, our next segment right now is going to be about my beloved Philadelphia Eagles and... Um, the concern coming out of Lincoln Financial Field and South Philly and all that good stuff. Um, listen, I was watching a clip today on X, formerly Twitter, and 19 months ago, only 19 months ago, a short 19 months ago, this team looked totally different. They're in the Super Bowl. They're going head-to-head with Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Jalen Hurts looks like he's going to eclipse, you know, Mahomes on a Super Bowl stage. He's trading, throws with this guy. The only blunder he made in the entire game of that Super Bowl was a fumble. That was it. But he played better than Mahomes in that game. He's threading the needle. He's throwing these passes to the sideline over two defenders, threading the needle right into the cradle of Dallas Goddard. He's launching it to Devontae Smith, launching it to A.J. Brown. There's no Saquon Barkley on this team. Still, this team looks tremendous, right? 19 months later, after that, after Chris Stapleton sings a beautiful, the most beautiful rendition I've ever heard of the Star Spangled Banner, uh, Nick Sirianni, tears streaking down his face during that, during that Super Bowl performance. And... As I reflect on this right now, I do not know what has occurred. This is almost like I saw a UFO, and I I, I don't I don't know how to describe what I saw. Uh, from from where we were to where we are now, in a bye week after this demol demoralizing demolishing act by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at one point. Two weeks ago, the Buccaneers had 250 yards accrued. The Philadelphia Eagles had zero. They could not get a first down. They had no yards until like late into the game. It was like in the second quarter at some point we started getting yards. I don't know what to say anymore. I, I don't know what more evidence you need. To me, Kellen Moore... I'm just going to say this, and then you can talk. <laughs> okay. Hey, take your time. It's like a therapy session. <laughs> Helen Moore, offensive coordinator, should be fired. Vic Fangio. This was supposed to – Vic Fangio up in – I hate when coaches are in the in the press box, basically, coaching from upstairs. I don't know why I don't it like – It just doesn't feel as personal I just don't like – I like coaches. Like, give me Jim Johnson – being rained on on the sideline he looks like he passed away like six years ago and he's still locked in like i love that um vic fangio and this defense dreadful dreadful it's 
it, this Vic Fangio is bouncing all around. He's supposed to be this old staple, curmudgeon defensive genius mind. He comes to Pennsylvania because that's where he has family and it's going to be a good thing for him to like ha take a retirement job. Why did we hire somebody who, who wants a retirement job? Like it's like, oh, I'll be close to family. I guess I'll get back in the coaching. Defensive coordinator, defense looks dreadful. Bryce Huff has recorded like two tackles the whole year. It makes no sense what we're doing. Um, and Nick Sirianni, we don't know what he does. So I know Kellen Moore's bad. I know Vic Fangio's bad. And then I don't know what Nick Sirianni does. So what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do as an Eagles fan? The people that I know what they do, they don't do it well. And then the guy who's running the whole show, who I don't know what he does, he doesn't even do nothing well. So what are we supposed to do? Hire Big Dom? As the head coach of this team, I don't know what to do anymore. Jalen Hurts looks awful. He looks mentally checked out. The dude does not look like the same guy on the sideline, James. He does not. He just looks like a dude who's mentally checked out. He's like, I don't know. It's like he's he's agnostic to the whole situation. It, it makes no sense. The only redeemable dude we have on this team right now is Saquon Barkley. And it's like... Listen, I know two weeks ago, you don't have Devontae playing. You don't have A.J. Brown playing. Lane Johnson's out. You have your three best players out. So it's not like I'm expecting to win that game, but it's just crushing to have no yards, to be 250 yards for the Bucs and zero. for. I thought there was a screw up on the graphic, James. I thought like a graphic producer for Fox Sports was like screwing up here. I don't know. I'm talking a lot, but I, what am I supposed to say? What am I? What is an Eagles fan supposed to do right now? I that was a five minute and twenty second rant. <laughs> um, as I'm looking at my notes here, but I wanted to let you get that off your chest. Thank you. I appreciate. That. Um, I, I hope you feel better. I do actually. Um, sadly enough, I, I I feel your pain. What what? Tell me that was what, one heck of a. So that was one heck of I'm a bias. rant. You're unbiased. You're not an Eagles fan. What what do you think? What does the outside look like? Because to me, being an insider on this, I just don't even see how Nick Sirianni has a job in a few more weeks. This is not the collapse of last season where it's a few games. This is like a 12, 13 game sample now where we look just awful. So 19 months ago, as I started this ran off and how good we looked it, at a certain point, it's like, what's a good analogy? It's like, it's like, let make pretend I looked like the rock 19 months ago or, okay. Okay. I'll try. Or, yeah. I'll try and envision. I look like the like rock. that. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't look like the rock anymore. So it, we, we can't keep like reflecting on the past just because like, I looked like The Rock 19 months ago, and I'm still walking around town like I'm The Rock. No, I'm not The Rock anymore. I, 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 I'm I not this chiseled dude walking around supermarkets. Is like, is that Dwayne Johnson? No, that's not Dwayne Johnson. It's Mike Davis. So we don't look like a Super Bowl team anymore. No. There's no more, like, what are we holding on to? All right, sink or swim time here on SOS. James, we were just talking last block about uh, coaching. Yep. What's going on in the NFL, some of the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, listen, Bill Belichick wanted a job after he was kind of kicked out of New England. Yep. Um, Atlanta. Didn't, didn't want him. Didn't want him. Puzzling. Um, Eagles. Wanted to stick with Sirianni. I would have loved to have Belichick. Now we see Belichick. He is on every show. He's, and he looks great. He looks great. He looks great. He's tremendous. He's not the curmudgeon guy that we thought he was. I think he's, honestly, he's better than Brady for in terms of insight and what I would like to hear. Yeah, if he was like that. on a, and I wish he was, like he's very good on studio shows and he's really good on McAfee and all this great stuff. I wish he was during, like calling NFL games, like as the color. Could you imagine? I would love that. Would it be too much for the average fan, though? Like, guys like me and you, sickos, would, would eat it no, up? I think but people, would the average fan not like that? I think people like would that? love it. Because he's very he, – he really knows ball. And he he's not – he says things in, a, in actually a very stern way, 
but that's very diplomatic. I'm surprised. Yeah. Like he'll say, like just frankly, you know, like ah, oh, you know, this, you know, on McAfee, or, or even during the draft when he was saying, yeah, Drake May can do these, but he's really weak right here, and he doesn't say it in like a condescending way. It's just. It's just, just like what a, it is. It's not a mean way. It's just I'm yeah. telling you what I'm seeing. And yeah. I love watching him. Like, even when he came on to talk about Darnold on McAfee, he's like, yeah, like, I don't know why, you know, the Jets didn't like him because every other team in the NFL liked him, you yeah. know, like could figure him out. Like, so I just like his insight and stuff. But we all know, James, guys like him, they always, they're just, it's, it's who they're they are. They're always itching to get back into it. It's who they are. Yeah. You know, and although he's got all this money and all this fanfare now being a media member, it's who he is. He probably, in deep down in his heart, always wants to be around the game and try to be coaching. Do you think he still feels that way with all the success that he's feeling right now as a, a tremendous authority and an analyst in the NFL space? Or do you think, you know, he maybe maybe he prefers this? Or do you see him coming back? I think, like you said, deep down he's always going to be itching for it, right? Because that's just a, that's a coach's mentality. That's how they are. You got to think though. He is how old now? He's got to be seventy two, right? Um, appears to be having a lot of fun on TV. Um, doesn't seem to be the old stuck in his ways. Belichick that we saw towards the end of his New England era. Is a team gonna reach out? I, I somebody will reach out. I I think somebody will reach out. Um, will would he take it if they did reach out? Remains to be seen. Thank you so much for joining us yet again. A new episode here inside the den of Sound Off Sports. Make sure you check us on social media. Follow us for full-length interviews and our full show on YouTube. That's a great place to go. Make sure you check that out. Until then, uh, for James Edward Berkman, the fourth, I'm Mike Davis. We'll see you next time here in the den for SOS.